There are a lot of things happening in the real world right now. Everything from the US uh, potentially launching attacks on the Middle East, all the way through to Evergrande going into liquidation. This is going to have a significant impact on the crypto market, including BTC. In this video today, we are jumping into the macro view for Bitcoin. We'll be taking a look at the monthly time frame and sharing my thoughts and opinions on where I think Bitcoin is heading. Let's roll the intro and get right down into it. Okay, guys, so here we have Bitcoin paired up with USD. Uh, this is the one month Bitstamp data. Okay, so there's quite a lot of information on this chart. It kind of goes all the way back uh, to basically August 2011. Um, up to the current point in time. We've got the green vertical lines on here. These are the Bitcoin halving events. And then we've got the white lines, basically just taking a look at um, the first uh, quarter of, uh, of 20, uh, well, the first quarter of every year, uh, specifically leading into the Bitcoin halving events. Okay, so we kind of looked at that before um, and we can kind of see quite clearly here uh, what's happened uh, since we kind of saw the beginning um, of uh, well, the first quarter leading into the year of the halving event. Okay, so let's just kind of recap this a little bit. Over here, we can see the first January 2020, uh, 2012. The Bitcoin halving event was November 2012. So we can see that what led into the Bitcoin halving event was actually really positive way back here. Now, this is a couple of real key interesting points with this over this side, and um, specifically with the low circulating supply that it was at the moment. A little bit of demand really did push the price up quite significantly. Uh, the Bitcoin halving event obviously halved the rewards, meant that the supply was shrinked even more or shrunk even more. And we can see a significant surge to the upside all the way up until we got into January 2014, where we saw this bear market move to the downside, right? And then, of course, we have our next halving event that happened in July of 2016. So the first kind of quarter leading into that was really unimpressive, kind of just sideways action. We have the halving event. We actually have a drop after the halving event for about a month, and then we're off to the races. And we can see really a lot of the traction came in the first quarter after the halving, not before the halving. Here you can see a significant surge to the upside. And again, there's a lot more circulating supply at this time. So it takes... Um, you know, it takes a lot less, uh, or it takes a little bit more demand, I should say, to kind of really push the price to the upside. Whereas before, uh, before the 2016 halving event, it actually didn't take too much, um, too much demand to move the price needle. And then, of course, the next halving uh, happens to be over in May of 2020. And we can see the first quarter uh, leading into that was actually really negative. We saw a big move to the downside, again, fueled by uh, the pandemic and things like that. And after the halving event, we actually saw about a month of negative price action and then sideways trading. And then we start to really kind of kick off back towards the beginning uh, of the next quarter, uh, or more specifically, quarter four into quarter one of 2021. Obviously, we know that 2021 was quite quite successful. So here we are at uh, the beginning of uh, the first quarter leading into the halving event, the halving event here uh, being April 2024, right? And we can see that we haven't really done terribly too much so far. And the expectation really is going to be probably sideways trading or negative price action. Okay, so there's a few things that I want to talk about uh, with the Bitcoin halving events that we obviously know are coming here um, and the price positioning uh, at these particular times. Okay, so there's a few things that are quite obvious but probably need to be spoken about. Okay, so the first thing first is that the four year cycle um, kind of theory here is incorrect. It's not actually four years. We can see that actually it's shorter than four years. Um, and this actually has a pretty significant impact gradually over time. As you can see, we're getting closer and closer to the first quarter, basically meaning that we're likely to end up in a situation that we saw previously of 2012, where the Bitcoin halving event is actually a couple of quarters out from the beginning of the year. And whereas at the moment we're kind of quarter two, uh, that's going to become quarter one, and then it'll become quarter four, and it'll kind of roll that way. 
because it's not four years. Okay, it's actually less than that. It's really obvious, but it probably needs to be spoken about because the analysis here that we can see with history or the historical price movements of Bitcoin is that the first quarter leading into the Bitcoin halving event has a 66.6% chance of being negative and a 33.3% chance of being positive, basically meaning you've got two thirds uh, of the history of Bitcoin's um, first quarter leading into the halving event have been negative price action, whereas only one third has been positive, right? That's going to change and going to shift quite a bit as time progresses. And this is really just because uh, we are not on a four year cycle. We cannot kind of consistently think that we're going to be repeating history when we're diff dealing with different underlying variables. <laughs> okay, so the moving target essentially. Now, what we do see here is that um, some interesting kind of things going on with the price action, uh, specifically to demand and um, and momentum sat behind the monthly time frame. Okay, so Bitcoin halvings to one side, we kind of know that there's one coming in April 2024. Um, but what's leading into that is potentially has a higher probability of being negative than rather than positive, uh, just from the stats point of view. Now, the other thing that we have to consider, and if we take a look at this, right, quarter one or January 2021, um, okay, so the first quarter kind of leading into that, we were heavily overbought on the stochastic RSIs. In fact, let me just bring up the stochastic RSIs here so you can see. Okay, so we're heavily overbought in January of 2021 on the stochastic RSI, and we did see an immediate move to the downside into late 2021 before rallying on up. Obviously, we saw that little move to the upside towards the end of the year. You can see this little blip on the stochastic RSI radar here before going down into the bear market of 2022. The stochastic RSI rose up quite rapidly on this monthly time frame during 2023. And we obviously have topped out right now. Okay, we're in January here. And things are heavily overbought in the same way that they were back in January of 2021. Okay, so we know what kind of happened after that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see kind of how um, the markets react. Okay, so keeping a close eye on that. Now, as we kind of go backwards here, we can also see that July 2019 was heavily overbought on uh, Bitcoin stochastic RSI. So momentum did shift to the downside until May of 2020. Now, that's kind of where we hope Bitcoin currently sits right inside this little little area, because if Bitcoin does sit inside here, that actually puts us in a really strong position for the, what's going to happen later in 2024. If, however, we are more likely to see kind of, you know, January 2017 scenario, well, we know what happened there all the way into late December 2018, right? We saw this correction from this overbought area to this oversold area. Now, at the moment, we're still in an OK area on the monthly time frame, as in I'm not expecting us to kind of drop down instantaneously or anything like that. We can, in fact, be up here for quite some time. As you saw from January 2017 all the way through to December 2017, we we're up in this overbought area. It fluctuated a little bit, though, right? We came down, we pushed back up, we came down, we pushed back up, right? The momentum was supporting this kind of bullish environment just a little bit before that complete collapse to the downside. So where we are at the moment is actually an okay area. Okay, we've got the white line and the yellow line, the yellow line being the stochastic RSI, and the white line being the average. Okay, and what we've got is we can see that when the yellow line crosses down lower than the white line or lower than the average here on the stochastic RSI, we generally see momentum really significantly shifting in the opposite direction, as in going down, right, uh, in this particular case. So we see this time and time again when we see the cross between the yellow line and the white line on the stochastic RSI, we go down. And um, if you see the yellow line going above the white line, we see price moving upwards, right? Momentum is supporting those moves. Now, because the yellow yellow line is above the white line here at the moment. On the stochastic RSI, I'm not terribly too concerned. We can be up here for a little bit more, um, but we can see rapid moves uh, both to the downside and to the upside, and it can take some time. You know, you're probably talking a year or so before you see that play out. Now, the thing to kind of bear in mind is that we can see that in January of 2017, let's bring back our price action right here, we were heavily overbought. In fact, we were overbought since January of 2016, right? And we just kind of hovered on this range until December of 2017. So we're up here for two years up in this overbought area, right? And that's because this area isn't really, or the stochastic RSI isn't really giving you an indication of price movement. What it's doing is it's showing you whether or not there is momentum supporting the move to the upside. And you use a... Um, 
a stochastic RSI, which is really price sensitive. And you can also use the RSI. And as you can kind of see, the RSI was growing during this time, showing you that actually momentum in a trend move to the upside was there. And again, that's the yellow line. Uh, here. And so where we are currently with our um, RSI is still not overbought, which means we can still push up even further into new all-time highs for Bitcoin should that time arise. But again, we are not seeing any kind of major movements just yet. So I'm expecting us to kind of see a little bit of volatility in the first quarter of 2024 and then that to shift and to change as we kind of progress through a little bit. Okay, so when we take a look at the stochastic RSIs, it gives us kind of the idea that things are looking unfortunately bearish, um, but the RSIs still show us with potential moves to the upside from a trend-based point of view. There's no divergences going on with bullish or bearish or hidden, bullish or hidden bearish divergences or anything like that. And um, so we're pretty confident that actually that's looking okay. But what ultimately I'm looking for is something similar to what we saw previously, a bit of a quick correction to the downside, similar to kind of July to uh, June 2019 uh, to March 2020. And that would give us the idea that we have a nice healthy correction, big reset on the monthly stochastic RSI, daily RSI, uh, or stochastic RSI, weekly stochastics already in a pretty okay position, but we'll probably see that move quite a bit. Um, and then we'll see pretty decent progression. So what I think the healthiest move for Bitcoin is going to be is going to be a bit of a kind of move down towards uh, 30k Bitcoin. Okay, and finding support on the 50 EMA, the 50 SMA, currently coming in at 29,000 on the SMA and 27,000 on the EMS, uh, EMA, uh, 50 EMA, the red line. Um, come down to these areas, test them out before the halving, and then the halving, we can either kind of just go sideways, um, or alternatively, you know, we come down a little bit, we kind of have the halving, we come down a little bit more, uh, and then eventually we kind of get that next big move to the upside, and specifically around quarter one of 2025. I think that's really where we're going to see that big next surge to the upside. Patience is going to be key here. I think when it comes to Bitcoin's price movements, we can't be um, impatient. We need to kind of let things kind of play out um, as they need to. We've had a lot of moves to the upside, not enough corrections to the downside. And as I said, with everything that is going on in the world, with you know the US and the Middle East, East, through to Evergrande, I think there's a lot of things that could potentially suppress the price action of cryptocurrencies um, for the kind of short to medium term. Why don't you check out this video here where I'm talking about black swan events and what I think could be in store for early 2024.